Hello. Is this working? I'm doing this live. This is new for me. Hold on. Hi, everybody. It's me. I think this is working. I have no idea how to tell if this microphone is working. And this is live, so this is really awkward, but I hope it works. Okay, so uh, cell types and organelles, that's what this is about. So let's get right into it. Now, there are two types of cells. Let me go back to this real quick. There are two types of cells in the whole world. And you're probably thinking there's got to be more than two. Look at all the complex life. Yeah, th well, there is more than two. I'm saying there's two major categories that they fall into. Okay, so all cells are either eukaryotic or prokaryotic. And it's real easy to tell the difference between the two. Okay, because here's the difference. Eukaryotic has a nucleus. Prokaryotic does not have a nucleus. Remember the nucleus is the part of the cell that holds the DNA, that's where the DNA is stuck inside. When we talked about protein synthesis, that's why DNA can't deliver the instructions to the ribosome where the protein's made because it's stuck inside of the uh, nucleus. But even these cells, these prokaryotic cells that don't have a nucleus, they still have DNA. It's just their DNA is free to float around the cell. It's not trapped inside of the nucleus. It can go wherever it wants. In eukaryotic, it's a little bit more organized. So that's the biggest thing. So here's how you remember it. Euke, euke means nuke. And pro means no. That's how you remember the difference between the two, okay? Difference between euke and pro. Euke has the nuke. Pro means no, no nucleus. The other difference is that they have complex organelles. And if you don't know what an organelle is, don't worry, I'm about to tell you. And these do not have complex organelles. I'm not saying they don't have organelles. I'm just saying that the ones that they do have are not necessarily complex, okay? Um, so, euk has the nuke, pro means no, euk has complex organelles, pro, they do not. Uh, what is an organelle? An organelle is an organ of the cell. So, the smallest living thing that you can have is just one cell. Right, that's the smallest thing you can have, the simplest thing you can have that still be considered a living thing. So there are single-celled organisms, and these single-celled organisms, just like you have, you're an organism, and you have organs in your body, and these organs in your body do functions that keep you alive. Well, individual cells, let's say a bacteria, for example, they also have organelles, some organelles, not many, that do jobs inside of their body and keep them alive. So that's why I call them the organ of the cell, because they do the same thing in cells that organs do inside of your body, okay? And there's many different kinds of organelles that we're about to talk about right now. So with that said, let's hop on over here. Now, these are the four cells that we're gonna focus on. First of all, let me go back here. There's actually, if I go back, I wanna, explain something real quick here. So there's actually four types of eukaryotic cells, and these are animal cells, plant cells, fungus cells, and a thing that we call protists. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot about protists today, but just know that protists, for future reference, is any eukaryotic cell, meaning it has a nucleus, that's not an animal, a plant, or a fungus. These, we know what they are. Protists are like the junk drawer in your kitchen. You don't have anywhere else to put them, so you just throw them all in this junk drawer we call protists. But they're all over the place. Some are single-celled, some are multi-celled, 
Some do photosynthesis, some don't. Um, the only thing that they do have in common is that they have a nucleus. So that's why they are one of the four eukaryotic cells, but that's all they have in common. So that's the junk drawer. So we're not gonna talk about those necessarily today. We're gonna focus on these three. And over here, uh, prokaryotic cells, there are two types. Type number one is bacteria, let's put BAC, just like this guy. And the second one is archaea. Wait, did I spell that right? Archaea, yes, okay. Those are archaea, which is another kind of bacteria. But basically, the easiest way to remember this is that prokaryotes are bacteria and everything else is a eukaryote. The only prokaryotic organisms are bacteria, either what I call regular bacteria or archaea bacteria. But if it's a bacteria, it's a pro prokaryote. If it's not a bacteria, it's a eukaryote, okay? That's the easiest way to remember it. So now let's look at these four. We're not only gonna look at regular bacteria and these three, okay? So these three here and that one here, those four are the ones that we're gonna look at today. So back over here, these are the four. We've got the animal cell, the plant cell, the fungus cell, and the regular bacteria cell. Again, we're not including protists and archaea bacteria even though they do exist, but we're not gonna look at them here. Okay, so let's go over each one of these uh, organelles. We're gonna talk about what the organelles uh, do and which cells, which of these cells that they are found in. Okay, so the first one that we're gonna talk about is the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this is thing number one, organelle number one that we are talking about. Okay, so you can call the endoplasmic reticulum the ER for short. And it's not this part, you could ignore this part, this big green thing, ignore that. And this is actually the nucleus over here, so ignore that, okay? The ER is this thing here. Okay, that's the ER, and there's two kinds actually. There's what's called the rough and the smooth. Okay, so rough ER has ribosomes on it, and ribosomes are the place, so these are all ribosomes. There's a ribosome, there's a ribosome. Those are the place where proteins are made. And so rough ER, that has ribosomes makes proteins. The uh, ER that doesn't have ribosomes is what we call smooth, because it doesn't look bumpy. And that actually, it doesn't make fat, uh, proteins, it makes fats or what we call lipids, right? So rough ER has ribosomes, makes protein. Smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes, and instead it makes lipids, which is what your cell membrane is made up of, which we're gonna talk about just in a second, okay? So that's ER. So which of the cells do you find ER in, endoplasmic reticulum? Well, you find it, it is number one, right? So it's in animal cells, it is in plant cells, it is not in bacterial cells, and it is in fungus cells, okay? So it's in the eukaryotic cells, animal, plant, fungus, but it is not in a prokaryotic bacterial cell, okay? So let's go on to number two. Number two is the chloroplast, it should be a chloroplast, right? Nope, hold on, something happened. There we go, number two, cell wall. Sorry, the picture is a little blurry, I had to blow it up. But uh, this is a plant cell and uh, this is the cell wall here. So the cell wall is just this outer layer that surrounds the cell itself, okay? It's just a thick cell wall that surrounds the cell and keeps it contained. 
uh, it's just a second additional layer on top of the cell membrane that we're about to talk about. We haven't talked about it yet, but we're about to, okay? So what cells can you find? Sorry, I keep trying to do the wrong thing. What cells can you find cell walls in? Well, animal cells do not have a cell wall. That keeps them from being too stiff and rigid and allows them to be more flexible and have sweet dance moves like this right here. Okay, so our cells are squishy. Animal cells do not have a cell wall, but plant cells do, which is why they're stiff and rigid. Um, bacteria also have cell walls. And fungus cells also have cell walls, okay? So these three do. Animal cells are the ones that do not. Right? Next. Chloroplasts. This is number three. So organelle number three is the chloroplast. Now the chloroplast is the place where photosynthesis happens. Okay, it's got an outer membrane, it's got an inner membrane, it's got these things inside that are called thylakoids. You don't necessarily need to remember all that just yet. We're not gonna go into detail about the chloroplast. I just want you to know that it is the part of the uh, cell that does photosynthesis. And because it does photosynthesis, you can probably guess what type of cells you find chloroplasts in. So animal cells, like us, we're animals, we obviously don't have uh, chloroplasts. So number three is the chloroplast, right? So there's a chloroplast in the plant cell. Um, no chloroplasts anywhere else, is there? Just in the plant cells, right? Now, there are some bacteria that do photosynthesis. There are some protists that aren't listed here that do photosynthesis, but this is just to show you what they look like and to kind of get you familiar with the organelles in general. We're not gonna get too into detail about uh, stuff that we don't have to get into right this second, okay? All right, so the next one, number four, is the vacuole, all right? That is number four, right? Let me just double check. Yeah, okay. So uh, vacuole is just basically a water balloon. It's a plate, your cells need water, right? Um, your cells have little storage units just for water, to have water on standby when they need it. Uh, and that's what a vacuole is. So this is basically just water storage, okay? Water storage. And it's got, it's very simple. It's just got like the balloon full of water. That's basically it, okay? So let's go back over to here. Which cells have vacuoles? Well, there's number four right there. Animal cells have vacuoles. Plant cells have vacuoles. Fungus cells have vacuoles. And I don't see any vacuoles in a bacterial cell. So again, bacteria, they don't have many complex organelles. That's not one that they have. You'll notice that plant cells actually have a really big vacuole compared to animal cells, which have smaller ones, which makes sense because plants can't just get up and go wa get water whenever they need it. So whenever, plant cells do get water, they have big storage tanks to hold on to it for when it doesn't rain. That's why trees and uh, all the other plants don't just dry up and die as soon as it stops raining. They have big water storage units that they feed off of until it rains again next time, okay? Let's go to number five. The cell membrane, here's the cell membrane, okay? So the cell membrane, has two layers of what we call lipids, okay? So it's actually called the lipid bilayer. Bi means two, right? That means two. So it's two layers of lipids, and here's a layer of lipids on top, these orangey things with the 
black legs, and then there's another one. And you can see that their legs point toward each other. So we got the heads and we got the legs and they point toward each other. We're not gonna get into that specifically just yet. We're just gonna say that cell membranes are like, if your cell was a balloon, it would be the rubber part of the balloon. It's just the part that you know, forms the boundary between, separates the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell, okay? And it also, um, so it surrounds, surrounds, protects, and, um, what am I trying to say? It, uh, it, it ch picks and chooses what comes in and what goes out. Okay, oh, regulates, that's the word I'm looking for. And regulates what comes in to the cell and what leaves the cell. And I'm not gonna write the rest of that, but it surrounds the cell, protects the cell, and regulates what comes in and what comes out, okay? Because things do need to get in and out of the cell. They gotta go through the cell membrane to do that. All right, so that is number five. Let's look. So. Animal cells have it, plant cells have it, bacterial cells have it, fungus cells have it. Spoiler alert, every single cell has a cell membrane. You can't have a cell unless you have a thing around the cell to keep all the parts of the cell inside, right? So every single type of cell has a cell membrane. That's one of the things that all cells have is cell membrane, regardless of what kind of cell that they are. All right, the next one, number six, organelle number six is mitochondria, okay? You've probably heard of this one before, the powerhouse of the cell, right? So the mitochondria, what it does is it makes energy for the cell. When I say it makes energy, there's a special molecule called ATP, don't worry about remembering this next part, but it's adenosine triphosphate. It's the name of a molecule that your body, animal cells, and other types of cells use for energy, okay? So the mitochondria makes ATP, but ATP is energy. It's the same thing, okay? It's the energy molecule. So when I say the mitochondria makes energy, what I mean is the mitochondria makes ATP, okay? And what cells do we find that in? Let's find out. Well, animal cells, of course, we have it. Oh, no, wait. Yes, it's number six. I said number six, right? Okay, it's number six. All right. I was thinking I was on number five for some reason. Number six, mitochondria uh, in animal cells. Plant cells also have. So notice that plant cells have both chloroplasts to do photosynthesis and make their own energy. Uh, and also mitochondria like we have. They have both, and we only have one. We just have mitochondria. Uh, bacterial cells, do we see any there? No, we don't. And fungus cells, they do, okay? All right, let's go on to number seven. Number seven, the Golgi apparatus, okay? So this looks a lot like the ER that we talked about in the beginning, but um, it does not make proteins. Its job is to actually package and ship proteins. So you know when your cells make proteins, uh, well, then they have to deliver those proteins to where they need to go. The Golgi is kind of like the post office of the cell, okay? I call it the post office of the cell because it pack, it puts these proteins that get made and it packages them up and ships them to where they need to go, just like the post office. Um, and these little things right here, so this, this whole thing is the Golgi, but each one of these things is a vesicle. A vesicle is like the mailman truck. It's like the, the you know, it's like the truck that the mailman drives to actually deliver it. So this is the actual thing. So consider this like the post office, this big part, it packages it all up and puts it into the mail truck. And then the vesicle, the mail truck actually delivers it to your house, right? Or to where it needs to go. So what cells have 
vesicles, or I'm sorry, the Golgi apparatus, which is number seven. Well, animal cells have it. Uh, plant cells have it. Fungus cells have it. And surprise, surprise, bacterial cells don't have it. Okay. Number eight. I already did that. Number eight, the ribosome. So organelle number eight is the ribosome. Uh, this is the place where proteins are made. It's the protein factory. I call it the protein factory. Okay, so we talked about how ribosomes are on the rough ER earlier, and you should know already that ribosomes make proteins because we talked about that before, but this is what the actual ribosome looks like. It almost looks like a hamburger bun. You got the big top bun, you got the small bottom bun, right? And the way that the ribosome works is it reads the mRNA that gets made from DNA, right? This has the encoded instructions on how to make the protein. Um, tRNA brings the amino acids over to the ribosome. The ribosome puts the amino acids together in a chain to make the protein. Okay. And I'm not going to get too much into that because we already talked about that. But which organ, I'm sorry, which uh, cells have the ribosome? Let's find out. Well, we know animal cells do because when we talked about protein synthesis, um, we were talking about it in terms of how we do it. But plant cells also do the same thing. They also make their own proteins. And bacteria even have this, okay? So ribosomes are one of the organelles that bacteria do have because all living things need proteins. And fungus cells have them. So basically every cell type has ribosomes, okay? So the two things that every cell has so far are the cell membrane and ribosomes. All the other ones are hit and miss. Okay, number nine, I believe, right? I'm on number nine, yep, number nine, okay. Number nine is the cytoplasm. So if your cell was a water balloon, the rubber part of the balloon would be the cell membrane and the water inside would be the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is just the fluid that fills the inside of the cell and it's, a, it's what we call a fluid medium. In other words, it's a way that things, it's a medium, it's a thing, it's a way that things get from one place to another, okay? They swim through this fluid medium of the cytoplasm, okay? So which cells have cytoplasm? Well, all of them, okay? All of them have cytoplasm. Animal cells, plant cells, fungus cells, I don't think it's listed on there, on the fungus cell one, but fungus cells do. All cells have this, okay? I guess that's a missing one, sorry about that. But anyway, uh, this also has, some of these pictures didn't have everything labeled, but they all do have cytoplasm, I promise, okay? There's no cell that exists that's just dry and empty on the inside. It's all, they're all filled with this fluid called cytoplasm. Wouldn't be much of a water balloon without any water in it. Okay, number 10, the nucleus. So, um, you know what this is. This is the place where DNA is kept, okay? Uh, I don't really have to go too much into detail about that, but it, uh, let's say that it stores and protects DNA. That's its job. Okay. So, which cells have a nucleus? Well, remember in the beginning I told you that the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic is that euk has the nuke, pro does not. So all the eukaryotic cells are going to have a nucleus, which is the animal cells, the plant cells, the fungus cells, and look at there, bacteria do not, because they are not eukaryotic. Okay. Protists, which aren't listed here, also have a nucleus because they are eukaryotic. Number 11, lysosomes. All right, so what are lysosomes? And what do they do? Here's the lysosomes here. They're like these little guys that live in here. If you zoom in on it and kind of cut it in half and open it up, it's basically just like 
a ball. Imagine a basketball. And, but inside that basketball is um, like digestive fluid, basically. It's, it's this fluid that just anything that goes into it, it breaks it down and destroys it. Okay, so the lysosomes, their job, they're kind of like the, they're kind of like the trash company. Okay, so they get rid of waste. Okay, they get rid of waste by destroying it. So just like you, every living thing creates waste. Even on a cellular level, each cell in your body also creates waste as just a part of its daily functions. And so this waste, your body doesn't have a dump to put it in. Um, so they have to destroy it. And, you know, whatever doesn't get destroyed, it gets put in, you know, you pee it out or you poop it out or something like that, right? That's a different kind of waste. What I'm talking about is just cellular waste on an individual cell level, tiny little pieces and particles and uh, things that are left over. You know, they need to be destroyed and gotten rid of. And that's what they do, okay? So which cells have lysosomes? Let's find out. Oops. Went too far. Okay. Lysosomes. Animal cells have them. Do plant cells have them? They do, but they're not listed here. Okay. Uh, yeah. They do. They're in there. Um, fungus cells, do they have lysosomes? They do, but it's also not listed. Okay. They also have lysosomes. And bacterial cells, though, do not. Okay. So the eukaryotic cells, animal, plant, fungus, they do have them. And bacterial cells do not. Just like most other organelles. Okay. Now this next one, I'm going to have to draw for you because I couldn't find a good picture online of it. But basically, here's how, here's what a capsule is. Okay. So we know, we talked about the cell membrane. Let's say that, you know, we cut a cell in half, we cut a basketball in half, and we're looking at that thin outer edge of the basketball, okay? It's actually, there's several layers to it, okay? So this is the cell membrane, the red line, the thin red line. That's like the rubber part of the balloon, right? Okay. But... Some cells on top of that cell membrane, all cells have a cell membrane. On top of the cell membrane, some cells, not all of them, like animal cells, we don't have this, but plant cells, fungus cells, bacterial cells, they all have an additional layer on top of that cell membrane, which is the cell wall. which is the blue part here, okay? Now, some organisms have a third layer on top of that. All cells have a membrane, some have a cell wall, but even fewer have a third layer on top of that, which I'm going to call well, I'm not going to call it that. I didn't name it this, but it is the capsule, okay? Okay. So again, all cells have membrane, some have a cell wall, even fewer have a capsule. So a capsule is just another hard protective layer on the outside of the cell. Which cells have that? Well, let's find out. Oh, sorry. Okay. The cells that have that, the only ones are the capsule. I'm sorry, <laughs> the bacteria. The only ones that have the capsule. Okay. So plant cells have a cell membrane and a cell wall. Fungus have a cell membrane and a cell wall. Animal cells just have a cell membrane. Bacterial cells have a cell membrane and a cell wall and a capsule on top of that. So those are um, the different cell types. Remember the difference between euc and pro. Euc has the nuke. Pro means no. Eukaryotic has complex organelles. Prokaryotes don't. Um, 
there's four kinds of eukaryotic cells, there's two kinds of prokaryotic cells, but the only two prokaryotic cells are bacteria. If it's not a bacteria, it's a eukaryote, okay? We focused on these four uh, types of cells. These three are eukaryotic, animal, plant, fungus. This is the only prokaryotic one we looked at. We talked about the organelles that are listed in each one, what their jobs are, and which cells you can find them in. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, how do I stop? Oh, there we go.